I'm Dr. Len Schwartz. I've been studying whole body fitness for a couple of decades now, just for two reasons. One has to do with getting more muscle into fitness. The other has to do with bringing fitness factors to all that muscle, things like strength, endurance, flexibility, balance, and skill. We learned that doing all those things simultaneously tends to make exercise feel easier and be more fun. Aging takes its toll on all of these elements. To make matters worse, it's estimated that we lose a half a pound of muscle and gain a whole pound of fat each year between the years of 30 and 65 on average. But I'm here to tell you that good exercise and nutrition can cancel those numbers and can certainly slow the aging clock. I discovered the joys of exercise after beginning work as a psychiatric consultant at a nursing home. I was 50 at the time. It has since become clear to me that exercise is a must for almost all of us and that it's almost never too late to begin. My first attempt at a whole body fitness system was called heavy hands and involved the use of small hand weights which generated a lot of muscle activity. This time around, we're not using any extra equipment. Your body, in fact, becomes the equipment. Every day we hear more about the benefits of exercise. Today I'd like to key in on just five of these because they fit so well with whole body exercise or what I call isotonometrics. They are strength, endurance, flexibility, balance, and skill. Strength refers to an application of force. It helps prevent injuries. And especially critical to seniors, it also preserves muscles. On the practical side, strength makes everyday tasks and movements safer and easier. Endurance usually comes from aerobic activity. It lessens cardiac risk. Endurance also speeds calorie loss. And in daily terms, it helps with sustained or strenuous activities. Flexibility is the same as suppleness. It too lessens the overall likelihood of injury. It also helps counter the normal toll of aging because it lengthens our stride and reach and it keeps backs and joints happy. Flexibility also makes favorite activities like sports and dancing more fun. Balance is an especially crucial but often overlooked fitness element for seniors. It increases overall stability. It also helps prevent falling, which is a particular problem for older people. Balance improves noticeably through whole body exercise. Skill can be considered the master benefit of the whole body system. Skill also motivates. The better you are at exercise, the more you'll do it and the more benefits you'll reap. Finally, it also brings interest and adventure to this and other recreational activities you may already enjoy. And now we'd like to introduce you to the system. Obviously, every one of us would like to live as energetically as possible for as long as we can. This is a whole body exercise system that focuses and integrates the upper body, the trunk, and the legs. The best part of it is that you don't need any accessory equipment. You are the equipment and you're carrying it with you all the time. Now I'd like to introduce you to one of our exercisers, Judith. How you doing, pal? Hi. You're looking great. Thank you. This is a system that unites, you might say, the muscles of the upper body to the trunk and to the legs. When you do that, a surprising amount of physical work can be done and it feels relatively easy. The upper body is of some interest because what we do is pit half of the upper body against the other half by funneling the work through some hand clasps. There are seven of those hand clasps, and I must tell you that one hand is working against the other during all their activity. The first four clasps are called rotatable clasps, and we're gonna teach those first. Just fold your hands and now rotate them on their side so that one hand is in fact on top. A top hand and a bottom hand. Now think about it. Either the top hand can do the pulling, the other hand holding back, 
or the bottom hand does the pulling. And where do they go? Well, they can only go in two directions. One is toward the thumb side, and the other is toward the little pinky side, or little fingers. So now let's try top thumbs. Top hand's gonna pull toward the thumb side. There we go, rotates, pulls back toward the thumb side, rotates, pulls back toward the thumb side. Let's do bottom thumbs. Bottom thumbs have the bottom hand pulling toward the thumb side, rotate, back toward the thumb side, rotate, and back toward the thumb side. It's hard to say. The next will be pulling toward our pinkies. So the top hand is gonna first pull toward the pinkies, rotate, pull toward the pinkies, or little fingers, rotate, and back. Now bottom pinky. Bottom hand pulls toward the pinky side. Great, rotates, pulls back. That's right, pulls back toward the pinky side. That's the end of those four clasps. Next two are called palms. And what we do is either push or pull our palms. Let's go push to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Now pull. Works different muscles. Matter of fact, all these clasps are related to using a bunch of different muscles and using them differently. So that's the end of those two. Now let's go to the last one, which is tip grips. Just grip this way, right. And pull, pull. Nothing has to be rotated here but it's a lopsided clasp. So what we want to do is switch. There you go, switch, switch. No, pull, pull, now switch. Great, great. And that's the end of the hand clasps. Next we want to work on the midsection and we do that by side leaning. So all we do, and it's a constant feature of this exercise. Let's go bottom thumbs, and lean toward the thumbs. Lean toward the clasp. Lean, lean. And these leans can be as vigorous or as easy as you enjoy. Last of all, we're gonna put some legs into it. And we do that and take it easy at first by a series of knee dips like that or step close step patterns. So let's go bottom thumb with leans and a little knee dip. Beautiful, super, excellent, marvelous. I, I can't think of any more adjectives. Great, great, great. Man, you have a penchant for this, I can see. Now we'd like to invite you to enjoy this little movement adventure and hope you enjoy it. I want you to meet my partners, Ann, Al, and Judith. And we're gonna work to this first rag, which includes bottom thumbs, side leans, or little dips of the knees. How you doing, gang? Pull them way out. Out to the side. Good for flexibility. Strength. He'll give you a little bit of skill. <laughs> Don't work too hard on your knees because we're just early in the game this song. How's it going? Looks pretty good from here. Pull them straight out for this song. Losing calories fast. Faster than you would if you were walking around the block. I can tell you that because we've measured it. So how's it going? Are you addicted? Pull them. 
Now for the second routine. This time we're going to run through the clasps, starting with top thumb. Yeah, it's a little fast, but it's nice. Top thumbs, right? Bottom. Bottom thumbs. Nice. I don't even want to talk. So beautiful. Top pinky. Bottom pinky. Great. Palm pushes. Palm pulls. <laughs> Something happening back there. Okay. Here we go to tip grips. Sometimes the beat becomes obscure. But so what? We're moving and we're getting healthy. <laughs> are you there? <laughs> you healthy people, are you there? Switch. Switch. Now, we're going to go to bottom thumbs. I mix you up? No. Now, top thumb. We're right on now, guys. Now routine number three. In this routine, we're gonna add hand trails because I tell you, these hand clasps don't go anywhere without hand trails. That's the other part of the system. And so we call it clasp trail technique. Now, how about bottom thumb while we're going to start doing these hand trails. It's the right tempo. This is just great. Now, step. Step. Or just close. How's it going? Nod if it's going. Shake your head if it's not going. Now, straight across. This is Barbara Seville. Now, figure eight. You can go a little bit down on those with the knees to give yourself a little more quad strength. Okay, wraps. Wrap around. That's the way. That works the lat muscle even better. Whatever clasp we're using, let's go bottom thumb while we're doing figure eights. Bottom thumbs and figure eights. Great tempo. Can't get over it. <laughs> neither, neither could Rossini. 
Straight across. Now reach. Reach way out. That's where you get flexibility and strength because if you're keeping the tempo up and going further, you're doing more energy. And it's fun. I think it's fun. And I'm not prejudiced, of course. Sing, sing with me gals, boys. If you're singing, you're aerobic. Isn't that what they say? Okay, top thumbs. Top thumbs and figure eights. A little more knee action. That's what makes you quad strong. Bottom thumb. Palm pushes. Wrap them around. Palm pulls. Here's you want deltoids. This is where you get them. The next routine is a nice slow number. And we're going to work again toward thigh strength. Not going too deep because it takes two or three weeks, sometimes more, to develop enough strength that you can go deep. Meanwhile, a little treadle like what I'm doing now is enough to grant you plenty of leg strength. Let's work half and half then, pulling kind of hard at the arm level at the clasp level. Now we're doing top thumbs, top thumbs, top thumbs, bottom thumbs. Good all over exercise. This is an exercise that teaches a little bit about the fusion of aerobics and strength. Because clearly, this is working both. You'll work to a, an excellent heart rate with a slow piece of music like this, at the same time gathering leg strength that will continue as you train. And you get a tempo like this, you're not going to kill yourself because you're not doing 60 or 70 knee dips a minute, but just about 50. How about palm pulls, guys? This music was composed for exercise. Don't you think? Palm pulls. This is for delts. Delts are the muscles shaped like a D that fit down between the tricep and the bicep. Doing exercise like this, you can produce so-called striations that all the bodybuilding freaks look for. And so do we. If I go down a little bit, just let me do it by myself. I enjoy it and it won't hurt anybody, but be cautious. Bottom thumbs. Do like a treadle. Go up on one toe. If you can see my 
foot pattern. Just do it like that. Just like that. It's a winner. If you did this and didn't do anything else, you'd probably get more fitness benefits than you would of most exercises that are essentially single move exercises like biking, jogging, excuse me Al, jogging. Palm pushes. Palm pulls again. Wrap them around. That means pull them way around to the side of your body. You increase the size of the arc without going straight. Tip grips. Finishing up with tip grips. The next routine will focus mostly on back and shoulders. I gotta tell you a story. I had a rotator cuff injury tear this last year. In the interest of my own health and medical science, I just abandoned all the other forms of exercise I do and stuck to isotonometrics. I wouldn't be doing this now if I still had that rotator cuff injury. Now, did it cure me? I think so. Now, let's do some stuff that shows how to train the back. Upper back muscles, rotators of scapula, that's where there's rotator cuffs come from. Common injury. Let's go up, top, top loops, bottom loops. I call this an elephant amble because it's good for my trunk. Nice. Now all these, when we, these are called bent loops. Get those elbows up. When you got your elbows up, you're working your delts. You can't not. And this is a perfect song for it, incidentally. Bottom loops. Down loops and top loops, we sometimes call them. Way up. And great leg work at the same time, so you're not really focused on one hunk of the body. You're doing it all, every time you do it. The next routine is going to involve some more clasp trail work and some, something on arm strength. Top thumbs, guys. This is a nice tempo, by the way, for this kind of exercise. I want you to pull harder and wrap them around. Bottom thumbs, bottom thumbs, top thumbs, treadles, a little bit of treadles, so you're doing a little bit of thigh work, quad that is. Now, Top pinky. Top pinkies are great for the tricep muscle, by the way, which is the bigger muscle of the two muscles, main muscles of the upper arm. Bicep is a third the size. Now, you're apt to get a heart rate while you do this. And if you're breathing a little heavy, just stop and check your heart rate right away. Because it'll quickly s s 
slow after that. Palm pushes. That's the way. Palm pushes work the pectoral muscle. If uh, my shirt were off, you would see the spasm of the upper portion of the pectoral. Yeah, it's true. But then if you want to switch to delts, you just do it. And you do it by palm pulls. Good stuff. And this is working the external obliques if you're pushing those side leans as you should be. That's yeah, fun, kind of. Hunch your shoulders and we'll include the trapezius. Where's the drums? Okay, bottom thumbs, wrap around. Wrap them around. It's good exercise. Cause it's got a lot of you mobilized. And there are those several fitness factors all working at once, which is what this exercise is all about. Straight across. Bottom thumbs. Figure eights. In this routine, we're gonna bring hamstrings into the picture. They're the big muscles in the back of the thigh and they're good for balance. Whole lots of other stuff. Make you a great runner, by the way. By the way, you don't have to do this like I'm doing it. You can take it easy. Any level of intensity is proper with isotonometrics. That's what makes it good exercise. Oh, balance, all kinds of leg skill. It's good for hamstrings. Hamstrings are muscles that injure frequently. A lot of people get a pull just when running. They're out of commission for weeks. If you keep them strong, that's less likely to happen. Top thumb. And some kicks for quads. You don't have to kick high, you can kick low. You know, exercise is very hard work, but there's a reward. Once you become a competent exerciser, you're allowed to play in the very idiom that you've been working at. So we want to do that in this segment. And we're going to play Simon Says or something like it. And I'm going to call out various movements. It's a review for us, but it's also playing around, which is what we want to do. All exercise should get to be like play eventually. That's the universal reward. Okay, high loops, high loops. That works the lats like crazy. Now, up slants. This is done with bottom thumbs, guys. Up slants, up slants. Hard work, but fun. Then there's one called a wood chop that goes like this. One hand pulls down, the other pulls up. Okay? Now I'll show you a progression. There are dozens of progressions. Watch this, straight across. Now what you do is progress upward. 
Simon says progress up for upward. <laughs> down. Now down slants are done with top thumb. Top thumb. Right. Are you playing? Or panting? Now, figure eight. Figure eight progressions. We're gonna go upward to top loops or high loops or bent loops like these. Sticking with me? Are we playing guys? Or are we exhausted? I don't think so. More progressions of the figure eight type. Works lots of muscles, guys. And we're playing. It's sort of a last message to owners of the tape. The trick here is to find yourself in all this exercise. There's a lot of stuff represented here, and you want to be able to pick and choose with the greatest of freedom. As a matter of fact, one of the things that exercise does is increase personal and somatic, you know, bodily freedoms. It's what it's all about. So you want to be able to work on any of the fitness factors here and zero in on the ones that are important to you and lay off those that aren't. In other words, to exercise choices that are going to make your life better in some way. I happen to believe in exercise, or I wouldn't be standing here this way. So pick and choose again. And you want to be able to work as hard as you want and as easy as you want. It supplies both ends of the spectrum, and that's what it's all about. This isn't my exercise, it's yours. Cha-cha-cha! Cha-cha!